Promo alert, promo alert, promo alert. Today is King David. Make sure y'all follow him on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that like button, comment, and let him know I sent you. Hey, he just dropped a new banger called It's Murder. Make sure y'all go check it out. The link will be down in the comment section. It's, it's, it's murder on these streets. So I alert you, keep your heat. It's, it's, it's murder on these streets. So I alert you, keep your heat. Certified step, I'm the leader of this age shit. Let's get straight into it. Killer Mike, he spoke at Rich Homie Quan funeral. And I must say, his speech have a lot of people upset. It's a lot of people say it's dark humor. It's a lot of people say it wouldn't be a black funeral if it wasn't messy. For the people that don't know what happened, Killer Mike had a speech at Rich Homie Quan funeral and he brought up the women that was going viral that allegedly had relationships with rich homie Quan secretly what and i just want to say this man i understand that people get on that podium get in front of all them people and want to have a viral moment want to make people laugh want to make people cry want to leave a stain on the people but at the end of the day you have to think about the people that's hurt you have to think about the people that's involved in this situation and i feel like it was very disrespectful for him to get up there and say what he said in front of rich homie corn girlfriend in front of them kids in front of the mother friends and family that really care because at the end of the day them chicks on the side those secret relationships that shit really don't matter to nobody but the chicks that was on the side. So for him to bring that up at the funeral, I think it was very disgusting. I'm in my travel clothes, so forgive me. It's a family for not being properly dressed. I didn't even understand why I got the call. I'm here first to speak on the behalf of just the black community here. Cause we've done a good job in this city, in the big city of Atlanta, in the small city of city of South Fulton. We've done a good job being examples that you can be anything you want to be. You can be a little boy who wants to play baseball. You can train, you can develop a discipline that although it doesn't lead you to the major leagues, it leads you to the major leagues in music. And you can be an example for young people after you. Anything is possible in this city. And Corey and Tammy have showed us that by the product that they produced. I want to thank them as parents for giving their child the stability that would give those beautiful children the confidence to know that they're competent to do anything they want. Not people might be like, who is that up there? My name is Michael Rinder. I'm Denise's son. And like Tammy's son, I sang and danced for a living. Like Corey's son, Michael and Anthony, my fathers, have watched proudly from the audience. And they've suffered some for me too. i just like to say that we're not burying a musician today. You're burying a man. You burying a man who was a student, who was a student at Fort Valley, who was a baseball player, who was a son to a mother and a father, who was a father to children, who was a loving companion by what the internet say to a few women. But the women that gave him his children, he treated with honor and respect. I'd never been in that man's presence and seeing him disrespect, and I've been, and I'm not gonna take longer than two minutes, I'm gonna say this to Atlanta. I didn't know him intimately. I didn't know him as a homeboy. I wasn't hanging out in the studio. I judged him by the fruit he was, the, the tree that he fell from, his mother and his father. Everywhere I have went in this city, you hear their name in high praise and honor. And everywhere he carried their name, it was in high praise and honor. So to young people in the room, I want to say carry your parents name in a way that when it's said it's going to be honorable and high praise I've never heard his father or his mother's name spoke lowly because I've never heard his name I would like to say see because a lot of us in the music industry our lawyers our counselors stuff they be people that have a certain faith they be Jewish folk 
So I asked my account one time, I want to go to your, one of your high and holy days with you. He took me to Yom Kippur. And for those of y'all who follow the Abrahamic religions, Jewish, Christianity, Islam, one of the greatest things we've taught in those religions is forgiveness and grace. And I stand here in front of two amazing parents and an amazing community that produced him. But also, man, I stand here in a room full of some people. They was his rivals about 19 years ago. And they got over that rivalry and they forgave each other and they lived. He was an example of grace. He was an example of mercy and forgiveness, not only in what he gave and what he was willing to exceed. He didn't let his pride and his ego and his security get in the way of being a good man. And I want to tell the young men that are in this room, some that were man righteously all the way down, some that was rival and got righteously all the way down later, you guys are leaders now. You guys are the lead in the fashion he led. If it's trouble, just get quiet and disappear and pop back up in a year. If you want to disrespect each other, find a room to go to and talk to each other, not in front of other people, so your pride and ego don't have to lead. We have an example in what this young man showed us because a lot of times the people who lean into alcohol, the people who lean into things that will soothe our pain are the most sensitive people and I stand before you today as a child of an addict. And I'm here to tell you my mother was so sensitive to the thoughts and feelings of other people around her that she carried a weight on her. And musicians, a lot of times when we're writing, we're writing and we understand this out of our experiences, but our writing comes from the experience of those around us. So believe me, that smile that he had carried the weight that you have. The smile that he's walked around with sometimes masks a shattery, hurt thing. And he still gave the audiences joy and love and laughter. So I want to say to us, forgive yourself for your own addictions. Because as you can see, I like sugar a lot. <laughs> forgive yourself for your own misgivings. Forgive your mothers. Forgive your fathers. Forgive your uncles. Forgive your aunts. Forgive yourself. And move forward how he moved forward. When he reemerged, he reemerged smiling. He reemerged with songs. He reemerged forgiven and being accepted and being forgiven by those he had had issue with. He reemerged like a man. So I want to challenge all the black men in here to let's be more like the icon we call Corn. Let's be someone who brings honor to our mother and father. Let's be a good example for our children. And let's make sure that we forgive ourselves so we don't drink ourselves to death. Let's make sure we forgive ourselves so don't we chase folly till we gone. Let's make sure that when we have a group of people in this room that much like our contemporaries who call themselves Jewish people, that we come with the spirit of I beg your pardon. We, we Yom Kippur, I don't even know how to spell it. But I know how to spell, I beg your pardon. And I promise that I'm gonna find someone I transgressed against or someone who might have transgressed against me and I'm gonna this week say, I forgive you. And if you'll forgive me, I accept your forgiveness. Because all I could think about as I sat here and watched this, this young man never stooped low. He always stood up high. If he, if he stepped on your foot, he said, excuse me. If you, if you felt like he did something wrong, even if it took a few months, they'd pop up and he'd beg your pardon and he'd allow you to be forgiven and he'd forgive. So I just want to hope in the rest of my life, how many days I have left, that I'm a lot more like Corey and Tammy's son. That I'm forgiven. That I bring people joy. That I bring people laughter. So I would just like to offer my deepest condolences on behalf of me and my family. I'd like to say to everyone in this room that Atlanta is a truly special place. That includes South Fulton. I like to say black people in this room, we have an opportunity to do it different. We have an opportunity to bring honor to his name by forgiving one another. We have an opportunity to get out straight. And I would challenge us to do it because I love y'all so much. And he's gone, he's in the presence with the Lord now. So that means he's probably looking at us on a remote control TV from heaven and he expect us to do better than we've been doing. I want to tell Atlanta, I love you. I like to tell Corey and Tammy, thank you for loaning your son to the world. I want to tell his children, thank you for allowing your father to be an example for us. Because so many days I'm sure he's away singing and dancing. I want to tell the woman and the women that loved him, you couldn't help it, baby. He was lovable. And I just like to say to Corn Man, I never got to tell you this, but I told you I wanted to see you and talk to you about something, but it's good for the room to hear.
I heard you talk about getting a, an advance on your album and the wisest thing you had said to anybody, you said, I told them I don't want all the money up front. Just give me something every month so that I can sustain myself. And I want to say to black people in this room, that was one of the greatest lessons I've heard every entertainer say. Let's be more conservative with what we do with our finance so we can give our children the stable life that Corey and Tammy gave him. Because that is the only way we will produce strong young men and women like the one we're sending to our Lord today. I love you all in Jesus' name. I pray that you all leave strong and healthy. To my Muslims in the building, Salam Alaikum. Thank you guys for being here as well. And I look forward to seeing y'all soon. Tammy and Corey, thank y'all so much. Make sure y'all hit that like button, comment, subscribe, turn on all post notifications. It's free. Do it for me. Promo alert, promo alert, promo alert. Today is Enemy of the State TV. Make sure you go follow them on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that like button, comment, and let them know I sent you. Hey, this ain't no law and crime type content. This right here is raw and uncut. I'm talking about y'all want to see all the shenanigans that go down in court that y'all don't see on regular TV and on the YouTube channels? Check it out. The link will be down in the comment section. Kids, we could have did this out of court, but instead he decided to bring us here. So here we are. Promo alert, promo alert, promo alert. Today is your boy Shifty Mix. Make sure y'all go follow him on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that like button, comment, and let them know I sent you. He just dropped a banger called Just For Fun. Make sure y'all check it out. The link will be down in the comment section. I put my faith in a gun. He was talking all this talk. We hopped out, made that nigga run. I got a couple of Z's that slide. Blissin' niggas just for fun. Don't get on this. Fuck no bitches, bitches smoke about the fun. He said some Hey, do me a favor. Look down right there to the bottom left and hit that like button for me. Hit that like button right there. I appreciate it. I continue watching. Promo alert. Promo alert. If you need promo, DM me on Instagram at music101ceo. $30 for one promo video on my YouTube. $50 for three promo videos on my YouTube. $70 for six promo videos on my YouTube. And $130 for 12 promo videos on my YouTube channel. Make sure y'all tap in and get that promo if you want to win.